All right, so switch statements. Switch statements can be seen as a different type of if else statements. I usually prefer using switch statements rather than a lot of if else statements because it just makes things cleaner and more readable. Now I'm going to go ahead and write out a switch statement and then based on the code, we'll, we'll check what it does and whatnot. We're going to need a value to, uh, to be evaluated. Let's do uh, int day equals five switch. I usually just so okay so how you write a switch statement is switch parentheses and curly brackets or switch tab or tab tab now this red highlighted code is the expression that needs to be evaluated so we're gonna go based off of day now we need to type in different cases for the switch start with case one break console right line monday and then do this for all the days right so this is what a switch statement looks like we have a value we have the switch statement itself with a value that needs to be evaluated. And based on that value, we're hitting different cases. So for instance, this one has the number five. So day, we're going to check what day is. In this case, it's five. So let's go down to five, which is this one right here. So this is the code block that's going to get run. Now the code block is in between the case and the break keyword. Break essentially just says break out of the switch statement or jump out. So once it's finished writing this out, it's going to hit break and run out of the switch statement. We also have default at the end, which essentially means that if this day thing, number five, doesn't evaluate any of these cases, then we're gonna hit the default one. So let's try running this real quick. See, it's printed out Friday. If I change this to one, we can see that it says Monday. So the switch expression is evaluated once. The value of the expression is compared with each value of each case, which is like this one, one, two, three. We know that this one's one, so it's going to evaluate to this case. And if there's a match, the associated block of code is executed, which is this one. And the break keyword is going to break out of the switch statement or jump out, if you will. If I were to write console write line, we're outside of the switch statement. And I'm writing this outside of the switch statement code block, which you can see right here. If we follow this one right here, all the way down here, we can see that we're printing this out outside of the switch statement. So we're not printing it inside. It's outside of the switch statement because it's a different code block. So if I run this real quick, we can see we hit Monday. So it gets this number, it evaluates to this code block right here, prints this out. And instead of going over to check case two, et cetera, et cetera, we have this break keyword, which is going to break out of this switch statement and head straight over to this line right here. We're outside of the switch statement. Let's look into the default one. So as I said, if it doesn't evaluate to any of the cases right here, so let's say if we were to type eight, because we're going to have a case for number eight. Let's see what happens. It says, sorry, what? That's because it hits the default one. So if there's no other case, then it's going to hit the default. Let's go ahead and add one for case eight. Case eight, break. And we can type out, wow, that's a new day. And since the day is number eight, we're going to run this real quick. And as we can see, it hits that code block instead. Wow, that's a new day. And that's really how easy switch statements are. As always, I do recommend you playing around with it for a bit until you feel comfortable and then moving on to the next lecture. Right, I'll see you then.